I can't even be freaking kidding me. This game is so broken, I don't even know where to begin. Okay, last week we took a look at Wacky Wheels, which despite its age, is still very fun to play and has stood the test of time extremely well. So, what do you get if you take the prototype of the engine used to create that game, accidentally give it to a bunch of guys who aren't really that good at coding, and then see what they come up with? You get today's ancient DOS game, Scunny Cart, and it is a disaster. Now, you guys know me. I don't throw around insults lightly. When I say this game is a disaster, I mean it. Well, it has a few redeeming creative qualities, notably the graphics and music. The gameplay itself is incredibly broken and feels more like a test of patience than an actual attempt to race. Plus, it performs the sin of stealing. Not just the game engine, but sound effects lifted right out of cartoons like Looney Tunes and The Simpsons. This thing angers me, not just as a game player, but as a game creator, and its existence forces me to question the legitimacy of everything else the developers of this game ever produced. Scunny Cart was technically developed and released by Copysoft in 1994, though again, the engine used in this game was created by Andrew Edwardson and was not only used without his permission, but also without properly crediting him, as Copysoft claims the engine under their own copyright in the game's credits. I should also point out that a number of websites incorrectly list this game as being released in 1993. While it was being worked on in 1993, the initial public release was in 1994. It's a 1-2 to player racing game with support for VGA 320x256 color graphics and both PC speaker and Sound Blaster audio support. As for its current release state, it's actually still shareware, technically speaking. The website for the Scunny games is actually in the process of being taken down, and the domain name is currently for sale, yet a few pages on the site do still work. However, because the site is only half working, you'll likely want to go to other DOS gaming sites to get the shareware version, or if you want to buy the full game for some inexplicable reason, you can grab it from the Payload storefront for $5 at store.payloads.com. There's also a pack available there with every Scunny game in it, including Scunny Cart, for $20, but I'd think twice before laying down that much money on these games, and you'll see why as we dig into this one. Considering the game engine used here is a prototype of the Wacky Wheels engine, it should come as no surprise that there's going to be a bunch of similarities between the two games, including the overall gameplay. But there are a few differences, so let's go over those first. For starters, there's no handbrake turns. In Super Mario Kart on the SNES, you would perform tight cornering by jumping while turning, which would cause your character to start to slide turn very sharply. In Wacky Wheels, you have the Handbrake Turn, which is essentially an instant 90 degree turn triggered by a button press. Scunny Cart, however, has no method of performing tight corners, and as such, several of the tracks end up being needlessly difficult versus the computer opponents, since they can get around those tight corners perfectly fine, but you can't. In terms of power-ups, they're entirely different from Wacky Wheels, and is the one aspect of the game that's a little more creative, especially considering you have both power-ups and power-downs. There's also no hedgehogs to hurl at opponents, and instead you get missiles. These missiles, however, are both a blessing and a curse. They're homing missiles and need to lock onto a target before they'll fire. So the one plus side is they never miss. The downside, though, is that unless you can get close enough to someone to lock a missile onto them, you're stuck with the missile power-up until you can use it. Any of the other power-ups you can hold onto, like turbo and invincibility, can't be picked up until you find a way to use that missile. And the other thing, too, is that the missiles only affect an opponent racer for about a second, and then they're right back into it at full speed, so they're almost worthless in terms of helping you out. 
The invincibility and invisibility power-ups are also not coded very well. Invincibility does indeed make you immune to bad power-ups and also prevents you from taking damage in the battle mode, but it does not protect you from environmental hazards like water and holes. Invisibility, on the other hand, is worthless against the computer, as the AI opponents can still affect you when you're invisible, most notably in the battle mode. And even in a standard two-player race, there's not going to be many circumstances where being invisible is going to help you out. That is actually one difference between the two games that's kind of cool, is that the battle mode here can actually be played against an AI opponent, unlike the shootout mode in Wacky Wheels, which is limited to two players only. But the battle mode tracks on display here aren't very well designed, and because the missiles can't miss their targets, it often just comes down to who can find three missile power-ups the fastest. Also, since all the power-ups are static, if all the missiles on the track are exhausted, the game just suddenly ends with both players losing. Another difference that doesn't quite work is that the racers actually have different speed ratings here, slow, medium, and fast. While the actual difference in speed is only very small, it makes a huge difference on the higher skill levels, where the fast racers will not only always win, but because the AI can make sharp corners better than you can, it's virtually impossible to get ahead of them without lucking out with the power-ups and driving perfectly. The reason you would theoretically want to race as a slower racer is that they can turn for longer without sliding, but entering a slide in this game is really not that big a deal, so again, there's virtually no reason you'd ever want to race as one of the slower characters. The last couple things to mention include the reverse mode and the jump pads. And some of the track designs actually take proper advantage of jump pads, using them to create crossover sections that you can jump over, something Wacky Wheels never quite figured out how to do thus making the tracks a little more dynamic. There's also a reverse mode so that you can see behind you as you're racing, but let's be honest here, that's really hard to look at. In fact, I'm pretty much done saying anything even remotely positive about this game. This game is rife with problems, and while I've already touched on a few of the less obvious ones, let's talk about the one that's been assaulting your eyes since you started watching this video. The frame rate. The default frame rate of this game is a mere 10 FPS, which admittedly isn't that much worse than 12 FPS Wacky Wheels runs at. But something to keep in mind is that Wacky Wheels actually adjusts the speed of the racers themselves when you change between the different engine horsepowers. Scunny Kart offers 50cc and 100cc racing options, and the way they make the game faster is simply by increasing the frame rate. What that means is that at the faster speeds, the game is processing things like power-ups and cornering just that much faster too, making the game a lot more twitchy and erratic. On top of this, there's another game speed modifier you can adjust, but again, all this does is make the frame rate higher or lower. I mean, seriously, look at how fast you can make the game go. This isn't sped up footage or anything, this is honestly how fast the game goes in 100cc mode at 100% speed. It is ridiculously unplayable. Another problem with the game is the controls. Now, I already mentioned how there's no way to perform tight corners, but the controls are designed so poorly that many times you try to just lightly tap the controls, either nothing will happen, or if your tap started during one frame and ended during the next, you'll actually get two button presses registered instead of just one, leading to all sorts of screw-ups, not just in the game, but in the menus too. Mind you, in the menus, these issues are just limited to joysticks and gamepads. Still, you'd think if you selected the wrong menu option, you could just hit escape and go back to the previous menu. Except that doesn't work when it comes to setting up an actual race. So if this happens and you accidentally select a race option you didn't mean to, you have to pass through all the menus to get into the game, abandon the game in progress, which then takes a moment as it goes through its typical game over stuff and everything, then you can go back to the title screen and try making your selections again, and hope it doesn't get screwed up again. Also, a bit more of an insidious problem with the controls has to do with the keyboard localization. Now, as I'm sure a bunch of you are aware, keyboards in different countries are not the same, and often have keys or key combinations which don't exist on other keyboards. Normally, DOS got around this by having a special program loaded in to adjust the keyboard code page. This way, keys could be properly remapped in order for different types of keyboards to be utilized. However, the guys at Copysoft thought they were being clever by using their own keyboard routines not just for the basic controls, but for entering your name when you make a high score. And as such, since it's bypassing DOS's keyboard code page lookups, 
and because CopySoft was operated out of Belgium, some of the alpha keys don't produce any letters at all, or the wrong letter, while other keys on the keyboard, which don't normally produce letters, will. Actually, speaking of the high scores, that's another thing this game does that's going to infuriate absolutely everyone who plays it. The computer opponents themselves are allowed to make high scores. I mean, seriously, get anything less than first place on any track and you're liable to see Scunny or Handbag make a new high score that'll be impossible to beat because of how broken the gameplay is. The last thing to mention is that there's no time trial mode at all. The practice mode simply allows you to do a single race on any track against computer opponents. Being able to learn the tracks and get better at them without the interference of other racers is a staple of practically every racing game out there, so not having this feature is inexcusable. Overall, Scunny Kart is a mess and it shouldn't even exist. The only reason it does is because the programmer behind Wacky Wheels accidentally included a copy of his source code when demoing his game idea to CopySoft, and when he decided to turn to Apogee instead, CopySoft must have thought it would be a great idea to steal his engine and use it for their own purposes. Now to be fair, I only know Andrew Edwardson's side of the story. But even if I did know CopySoft's side of it, I'd be far more inclined to believe the guy who actually has programming talent than the team which not only put out this tripe, but then tried to claim they made the engine themselves. In short, Scunny Kart is a horrible game and a thief. I can't recommend anyone play it unless they're morbidly curious, and I feel somewhat sick having spent $5 on the full version just to see if there was any reason to. Granted, at least it's not that hard to set up in DOSBox. In fact, all you gotta do is leave cycle set to auto and turn off timed intervals for joystick support and you should be good to go. Anywho, that's all for today's episode of Ancient DOS Games. Episode 134 will be on Saturday, April 5th. And as far as edutainment month goes, since I don't have many edutainment titles to draw upon, I decided to have a go at some really old titles I found stashed away in my 2000 Shareware Games collection CD. And you guys are not going to believe some of the things I came across. In fact, I could very well end up blowing some retro gaming minds, so be sure you stay tuned to see what I've managed to dig up. By the way, one of the characters is named Pussy and is a purple octopus with tentacles. I have no comment.